In this episode, we are going to create this really cool scroll snapping effect. Scroll snapping is when we scroll, it actually snaps to a specific section or part of a section in a screen. It's a really cool effect that I've used to create CSS slides or CSS carousels and even like just guiding the user's attention to a specific part. And you can see here, even when we're like not scrolling enough, it bounces back. But once we go over to the threshold, it jumps into the section that we want. We're going to build it with just HTML, CSS, and we're going to start right now. Welcome back. I'm going to start from scratch here with no boilerplate so that you can build this 100% for yourself as well and understand each of the steps involved. All I have here is my empty index.html, so let's start filling it out. So I'm going to start typing HTML5, and Emmett will fill that out for me. Then I know I'm going to also need a style sheet in here, so I'm going to wire that up now as well. We'll add that, and it's linking to a style.css. So let's make that style.css now as well. Perfect. I'm just going to say body with a background of tree 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 here, just to make sure everything's wired up as expected. And let's just jump over to the preview. Perfect. It's the right color at least. So the next thing we're going to do is add in a little bit of boilerplate here in the body just so we have something to work with. So I'm going to have a div, not a sieve, and I'm going to give this a class of container because this is basically going to hold all of the items I'm going to scroll. And I've got a little bit of boilerplate or a few items with some text in it already on my clipboard. So I'm just going to paste it in here. Each of these items then just have a class of item um, that we're just going to style up after. And it's just so you didn't have to see me go and fumble over finding some emojis here. It'll just add a little bit of uh, color to the page at least. Let's jump into the style sheet now. We'll add a little bit of boilerplate styles here so that we can get started. I'm going to first off get rid of this because it's not needed, but I am just going to give a font family of Arial just so that we have a little bit nicer than the standard font. For the container, I want to give that a max height of 100 VH so that it takes up the entire screen view. I want it to overflow scroll. So when we scroll, it will actually scroll within that view. And we'll need that in a little bit and you'll see why, but that's kind of how we're going to control this snapping effect is actually having a container that scrolls and then it will snap to each element inside that container. Next, we will add some styles to the items. We'll say dot item to target classes, we will say border bottom 10 pixels solid white. And this is just so we can separate them and also so you can see that we can snap without even seeing those borders most of the time. And we will give the text a color of white as well. Background color of a nice pink that I use on most of my things if you've seen any of my videos before. We're going to give it a display of flex. I want everything uh, horizontally and vertically aligned. So I'm going to say justify content center and align items center. 
So when we justify the content, it goes along its main axis and then it goes along the opposite axis with the align items. But because we're doing both of them, it's okay to mix them up. Basically, we're going to say we want the things in the middle of the screen. We'll make sure we have a height of 100 VH for each element to make sure that each piece or item on the screen takes up the entire height. And to make it a little bit responsive, we'll give it a font size of 6VW. And it'll just, so it's nice and big, but it will also shrink when we get to smaller screens. So let's see what this looks like right now. Excellent. We have everything pink but it's taking up the whole screen. So that's a good start. I've noticed that basically we have that big white lines on the outside of the elements as well. And I'm just going to get rid of that by defaulting the margin to zero in the body as well. And now if we go back, we should got rid of those white lines. Perfect, but we still have the border bottom like I was expecting. To stop it being too boring, let's split up the colors a little bit here. Use a pseudo selector to do this. And we'll say the item that is nth child. And we're going to give this the odd one. So for each odd child, we'll give it a background of 2B, 2B, 2B. Now we should have a little bit of a different. So one, two. So every odd element is now gray. Perfect. The only other thing I can see here is that we have this border on the last one, which we probably don't want. So let's get rid of that as well with a pseudo class as well, or a pseudo selector. And we'll say dot item. last child and we'll say border none excellent now let's just have a look scroll all the way to the bottom no border anymore excellent so now we can actually get into the magic in this of actually snapping to each item so if we go back here again we can see if i scroll it's not it's just whenever i stop scrolling it stops wherever or it doesn't kind of move to where i'd like it to obviously if we were having this as sections in a page we'd like it if it kind of landed each time we scroll to the next section so it was like a story unveiling and to do that is actually super simple what we have to do is in our container, we can give this a scroll snap type of Y. And then for the items inside it, we will give a, a, a snap scroll align property. So we will say scroll snap align. And we will say center. Or we could say start or end as well. So it doesn't really matter here because we have um, a height of 100 VH. So it's going to be even all the time. And I'll show you what the difference is in this in a second by growing them out so we can see what happens with each one of those. So let's save that and jump over to the preview. And excellent. I scroll and it gets to where we want it. Now, if I move really slowly here, you'll see it actually sometimes won't pick up where I go. Now, there's a little thing you can do here to force it to always take up or snap to where you want it to, but it kind of goes against a lot of accessibility standards. So I would advise against using this, but if you're doing this to make, say, your own uh, type of slides or something like that if you're just kind of mimicking some slides for a presentation or that then this might be a perfect excuse to use it i've actually used this for when i'm presenting an app to a client i've embedded demos in my slides so this is something i've used this for then
And now, if I go through this, you will see if I scroll a little, it forces itself back. Or if it's over a certain threshold, it'll end up going beyond. So that's pretty cool. And let's just see what happens when we ha play around with these properties a little bit. I'm going to keep the mandatory on so that we can see exactly where these things are snapping. So let's say if we say snap end, and we'll give each of the items 160 view height now. So as you can see, we can scroll freely in our elements, but as soon as we get to a threshold point, it'll actually scroll down and snap to the end of our elements. And that's why we're seeing our white border there. So if we wanted this to be centered, we could then put this in as center. And now, when we scroll past it, it will automatically align to the center of the element. So if you're unsure with how high something will be, this is a cool way of getting it to snap to the center of the content of the screen. I'm going to move this back to 100 VH, not to mess it up too much. And let's just show you how you could use this in an X mode as well, or with a scroll snap type of X. So right now it's in a position where it probably won't do anything because we have all our elements stacking. So let's give this a display of flex. And before I forget, let's change this to X because we're gonna be doing the scroll snap type of X this time. And let's jump over to the preview. And we'll see because everything's at the moment squashing together. Uh, let's change that by adding a min width to each of those elements. So if I go down to my items, and this is probably a very hacky way of doing this. I probably don't need display flex for this but we will say min width of 100 view width. And let's jump back over. And now we have a nice sl sliding style. So it looks pretty sweet now. The only things to remember, I suppose, when you're doing these things are that it's pretty frowned upon in the accessibility community if you're using the mandatory flag because it forces the behavior. If you re reduce this, at least it will kind of suggest it. So let's look at this now without it. Yeah, you see, it can get stuck a little. And so for like a presentation slider or something like that, it might be weird. But for a normal website, this would be perfectly fine because most people will scroll with enough force that it will spill over to where you want it and you still want to give the user the control if they want to be sitting somewhere or zoomed up in a certain position that you're not expecting that at least they have the option then. So I hope you found this video helpful and if you did make sure you like the video and hit that subscribe button. I have a few more creative videos like this coming up so make sure you hit the notification bell as well so you get notified when the next one lands. And until next time, happy coding.